Welcome back everybody to High Point. How are we doing on this fantastic day? I'm glad that you guys are doing so well because I am too. It has been an amazing day so far and now I get to do my favorite thing in the whole world which is to teach you guys. This is the thing I look forward to more than anything and on top of that, today we're going to do a BGMC lesson, and I love, love, love BGMC. Guys, it makes me so excited that I can teach you about places where people need to hear that Jesus loves them so much. And one of those places is the country we're going to talk about today. That country is a little country you may have heard of before with the name of... France. How many of you have ever heard of the country of France before? Wow, I think I saw every single hand go up. France is a country in Western Europe. Europe is that big kind of goofy chunk that sticks out from, uh, from Russia and Asia. It's kind of a, a weird looking land mass, but France is right just kind of off kilter from the middle. Uh, to the west of it is the Atlantic Ocean, and to uh, the south of it is Spain and the Mediterranean uh, Sea. So it's got water on two sides, and it's got Spain down there, beautiful Spain. Uh, France shares its borders also with Germany and Italy, and uh, several smaller countries too, that you know, little itty bitty countries. Uh, France itself, though, isn't very itty-bitty. It's about as big as the state of Texas, so it's not very small. Mountains stretch all along the southern and eastern borders of France. The, the flat plains and rolling hills cover the land in the north of the country uh, and the west of it. Um, France has extremely good farmland, and it produces a whole lot of Europe's grains, vegetables, and meats. The weather there is kind of different than our weather. In the south, the winters are really warm and they're wet, and the summers are hot and dry, and it rains a whole lot in the northern and western parts. And the winters, guys, they're never very cold in any part of France, uh, except for when you get up high in the mountains. There are 65.1 million people 65.1 million people that live in France. And the capital city, oh, wow, you guys beat me to it. That's right, it's Paris, Paris. Paris is the capital of France. And there are 10.8 million people that live in Paris alone. The language they speak, it, yes, you're right, it's French. Wow, you guys must be really learning because you know a whole lot of stuff about this. You are absolutely right. They speak French. I do not speak French. So when we get going on some of our, our lesson here, if I mess up a word, don't laugh at me too hard, okay? Okay. Guys, there are 23 United States Assembly of God missionaries who work in France. And we'll get into that a little bit more because they do something very specific. But what you need to know is that most French people, they belong to a church called the Roman Catholic Church. Although even though they belong to that church, hardly any of them ever attend a church service. Out of every 100 towns in France, only four of those towns have a church that preaches that Jesus is the Savior who died to save us on the cross. It's not very many, is it? So a lot of people say that they belong to a church, but they never go, and they never hear that Jesus is their Savior. That's sad. Well, in 1927, an English missionary named Douglas Scott, he went to La Havre to study French. That was his whole goal, was just to study French. He stayed in a hotel that was run by a Christian lady. She had been praying that missionaries would come to France, and as as Douglas Scott preached, a whole lot of people were baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Scots decided to stay, and they started churches in, in a whole lot of cities in France. In 1932, Pentecostal pastors all met together, and they created the French Assemblies of God. 
But now we're going to get to those 23 U.S. Assemblies of God missionaries. See, we have 23 of them there, and they work with the French AG because a whole lot of the people won't go to church. Like, they just won't even come to church. Because of that, they have to find ways to take the church to the people. They don't just sit in the building and expect the French people to show up because they won't. So they find ways to go out and engage and meet those people right where they are. One of those ways, which in the 21st century here, it's very popular, one of those ways is the internet. Uh, some missionaries, they produce Christian TV shows and they broadcast French sermons. Um, online Bible studies and global university courses, they teach God's word to people. In 1999, a French AG pastor started, and here's one of those French words I'm going to mess up, top, top um, It's now the largest French Christian website. So there's a lot of ways that they're able to reach people through the Internet. Uh, another way that they're meeting people and reaching them is by taking the gospel out to the streets. Uh, most young people, they, from kids to university students in France, they don't have any idea who Jesus is. They just don't know. And what they do know is very little. You know, they might know that he was born on Christmas and that he died on Easter, but they don't know much about him at all. Some of the churches, uh, they go out into the streets with puppets and they go out and do puppet shows and dramas so that they can teach those kids and those uh, university students about Jesus and actually so they can learn. And, and a lot of people in France, guys, they come from other countries because they're fleeing war. And the French AG and our U.S. missionaries, they reach out to these refugees and they help them. They reach out to them. And they say, we're here to help you. About 200 AG churches in France have services for Roma gypsies. Those are a group of people, maybe you've heard of them before. Uh, they're a group of people who live in France, but they're usually not welcome in any of the cities or communities. People don't want them around, so they're just kind of left on their own. And like I was saying, BGMC has been helping reach the people of France through all sorts of TV shows. Well, one of them is called The Puzzle, and it's a musical drama. And then through another TV show called Le Boulevard des Enfants. I think I'm saying this right. Stop laughing. I know I sound silly. But it's, if you translate it, it's Kid Street. It's another TV program. BGMC has provided the supplies to help those Roma gypsies missionaries over there, we, when we give to BGMC, they get money and they put that money to use doing things like flannel graph materials and, and all sorts of things that they can take out and teach people. And they tell Bible stories to the gypsy people. Usually it's they tell it to the kids and then the kids go home excited and the kids, in their excitement, they get the adults to come and then both the kids and the adults get saved and they get to live with Jesus forever because he's forgiven their sins. I mean, all of these people, guys, in France, they're being reached because you helped. Because you and me, we gave money to BGMC. And so I just want to say thank you. That, that's huge. That's such a, an amazing thing, guys. I really, really am grateful. But now we're going to get to my favorite part of BGMC, and that is we're going to learn a little bit, a bit about a day in the life of a French kid. Um, today, okay, no laughing here because I have to say some French stuff. Salut, bienvenue à Lyon, France. Uh, I probably botched that and sounded like I was gargling with water or something. But what it translates to is, hi, welcome to Lyon, France. Kareen, who is the young lady that we're going to meet, lives with her family in an apartment here in this eastern city of France. So Lyon, it lies between two rivers, the Rhone and the Seine. That's where they meet, and that's where Lyon is at. More than a million people live in that area, and a whole lot of tourists enjoy the beautiful mountains and parks and museums and all the other sites in this extremely old city. See, Lyon has been around for a long time. 
In fact, Lyon has been around for such a long time that it's famous for silk and fashion and movies and wonderful cooking. Korean's family, they have a car, but unlike in the United States where we are, there are a lot of other ways that people get around the city. See, Corrine, she rides her bike around the neighborhood. Um, she likes to take the metro, which is the underground train. Um, that, when she does that, she goes to her dad's office. There are city buses and bike trails and rollerblading trails throughout all the parks. And tourists, they really love to see the city from boats on the rivers. And some of those boats, they even serve lunch and dinner and have big rooms so you can have a meeting on them. Some people even, just like us, like to enjoy the rivers in canoes and kayaks. But Corrine's favorite way to travel, guys, is on the TGV. Now, I have a son who was obsessed with trains for a really long time, and so I knew what the TGV was before we ever got into this lesson. But I'm wondering, do you know what the TGV is? Oh yeah, I kind of gave it away. It's a train, isn't it? <laughs> Guys, it is not just a train. It is a high speed train. See, Corrine loves to go to see her cousins and her grandparents who live in Paris. If they drive from Lyon to Paris, it's five hours in the car. Ugh, that's a long time. But see, on the TGV, it only takes two hours. That TGV I was telling you about, it's, it's not just a train, like I said, it's a high-speed train. It goes 170 miles an hour. That's 100 miles faster than when we're driving on the freeway. That is super fast. And the crazy thing is that the TGV that she's on is actually one of the slowest TGVs that there is. They can go really fast. But anyway, when they get to Paris, the family enjoys long walks around the city. It's a beautiful city. And they relax in the parks. Lots of tourists come to Paris. And then, they, they, in fact, so many tourists come to Paris that it's actually more than any other city gets tourists in the entire world. There are more tourists that visit Paris than any other city in the world. And when they get there, they visit really famous things like the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre Museum, uh, Notre Dame Cathedral. Well, maybe not so much that anymore, but uh, there are all sorts of world famous things in Paris that people go to see. And during the month of August, most of the families in France, they go on vacation. Corrine, she loves to go to the mountains where the family can hike and fish and ride mountain bikes. That sounds a whole lot like the things we like to do. She and her brother, they also like to do... Uh, you guys wouldn't... You, you guys don't, don't like doing this stuff, so... What's that? Oh, you want to hear it anyway? Okay, fine. Kareen and her brother like to play video games. I know none of you guys like to play video games. Oh. Almost all of you like to play video games? Well, okay. Corrine and her brother, they like it too, and they also like online games. But that's kind of, you know, beside the point, because we're talking about in August, when they're on vacation, and now we're going to get into what happens when they're not on vacation. See, Corrine's parents, they both work, and Corrine started school when she was five, or pardon me, when she was two. I can't read today, apparently. Uh, she's now in primary school, though, and school for her starts in September, and it ends in July. Corrine only gets one month off from school a year. Would you like to get only one month off from school a year? <laughs> no, I saw you not uh, saying no. That was crazy. But Corrine's school day doesn't only, you know, go through July, but it starts at 8 in the morning, and she doesn't get done with it until 4 in the afternoon. That's almost an hour and a half to two hours longer than you guys go to school. But she does get two hours off during lunchtime. Would you? How many of you would like to have a two-hour lunch break? Wow, I saw all those hands shoot right up, and I saw a lot of moms and dads say no. 
But Corrine does get two hours off for lunch. She doesn't go to school on Wednesdays or Sundays, but she does go on Saturday mornings. How many of you would like to go to school on Saturdays? Okay, now it's the opposite. I didn't see any kids' hands go up, but all the moms and dads said yes. Huh, that's pretty crazy. At the end of Lycee, which is high school for them, the students, they have to pass uh, an exam before they can go to one of the big universities. And Corrine's brother, Luke, he hopes to get one of the grandes escoles. I don't know, I probably messed that up too. But it's a great school. He wants to go to one of those great schools to study for a job in either the government or the military. But enough about school. Kareen and her friends, they also love to play games just like you and I play. But those games have different names. See, they play Lelu, which is the wolf, and really it's just tag. So now you can go to school and say to your friends, do you want to play Lelu? Yeah, they aren't going to know what you're talking about, are they? They also like to play a game called Kashi Kashi, uh, which is hide and seek. Corrine's brother loves soccer, basketball, and table soccer. You might know that as foosball, but the French call foosball baby foot. I now am going to call foosball for the rest of my life. I'm going to call it baby foot. And now we come to my absolute favorite part of all of the BGMC lessons. We're going to talk about food. France, guys, is extremely famous for its excellent cooking. Before going to the school and work, Corrine's family, usually they eat croissants and other pastries, and then they have coffee for breakfast. How many of you want some coffee for breakfast? M moms and dads, you're going to get dizzy from shaking your head no so fast. No, you don't want them to have coffee for breakfast? Hmm. Well, that's what they do. They, they also enjoy sandwiches such as ham and cheese and vegetables for lunch. And dinner is served really late. In fact, it's usually not served till about 8 or 9 p.m. It's their family time, so everyone eats slowly and they enjoy talking together. Dinner usually starts with French onion soup. Oh, I love that soup. French onion soup and then meat uh, or fish, and then they have some pasta or rice or salads. Cheese is served along with fruit and nuts and bread. And Corrine's mom often prepares a light, sweet dessert. Mm, dinner time might last several hours. Could go till midnight or later. But don't think that that's all they ever do. Corrine also loves to eat at McDonald's and Pizza Hut and all sorts of other fast food places, just like you guys. And in France, on January 6th, the French people celebrate something called Epiphany. Uh, it's the visit of the, the Magi to the infant Jesus. On that day, the wise men figurines are then finally added to the nativity scenes in homes and churches. Up until that time, the wise men figures are they're either hidden or maybe they're placed really far away from the nativity scene and moved closer every day. But it's just something kind of fun. And at the same time, Corrine loves Epiphany because she gets to eat King's Cake. Have you guys ever heard of King's Cake? Well, maybe you have. It, it, over there they call it Galette de Roy. Oh, boy, I'm just butchering these things. The poor French people. They, I hope they don't ever see me saying these things because they would just laugh and laugh at me. But anyway, the King's Cake is made especially for Epiphany. Um, the King's Cake, they take a little porcelain figure and they place it inside a flat round cake made out of flaky puff pastry. Uh, and then they fill that puff pastry with cream. While the cake is being sliced up, the youngest member of the family, they sit under the table and they name who gets each slice of cake. The person who gets the piece that has the figure in, figurine in it becomes the king or the queen for the day. Oh boy, how many of you would like to be the king or the queen for a day? Whoa! I saw two hands up for most of you kids. Well, a lot of the bakeries in France, they will provide the king's cake with a golden crown that's made kind of out of thick paper, almost like a Burger King crown. Um, the king or the queen of the day, they get to wear that crown the whole day long. That's pretty crazy. I think you all would look really good in a big yellow crown. That's pretty fun, isn't it? Well, today I have something really special for you guys because 
I found this story that goes along with our lesson for France. It's a true mission story. So this is, this is a story of something that really, truly happened. And I'm really excited to share it with you. But it is a story, so I'm going to go into story mode. <clears throat> Kenneth Ware looked at his Jewish wife, Susie, as she came into the room. I need money to buy food, she said. I have none to give you, Kenneth said sadly. A few minutes later, Kenneth heard Susie praying. Her voice sounded like she was talking to a close, trusted friend. Jesus, she said, I need five pounds of potatoes, apples, peas, a cauliflower, carrots, veal cutlets for today, and beef for tomorrow. She even named a particular brand of flour that she wanted. And when she was finished with her list, she just simply said, thank you, Jesus. That Saturday morning in 1943, war was raging really fiercely throughout France. The Jewish people were being snatched up by Adolf Hitler's Nazis, and they were carried off to concentration camps, or they were killed in gas chambers. So it was a very dangerous time. For the past year, Kenneth had been helping Jewish people in France escape for, uh, pardon me, to safety in Switzerland or Spain. Eventually, the Nazis learned about his efforts, and they set out to capture him. Through a series of miracles, guys, he, Susie, and their young son escaped to Lausanne, Switzerland. They found an apartment that they could afford, but there was no money left to buy any food. But later that same morning, someone knocked at the Ware's apartment door. When Susie answered, she saw a man holding a basket of groceries. The man looked to be somewhere between 30 and 40 years old. Um, he was a little more than six feet tall with really light hair and bright blue eyes. He was very strong looking and, and his countenance or his face was shining. Over his work clothes, he wore a long blue apron, which was the same custom for anyone who was delivering groceries. The man spoke in, a fre uh, spoke in French in a voice that was sweet and low. And this is what he said, Mrs. Ware, here are the things you asked for. Susie said, I don't think so. There must be some mistake. I didn't order anything. But the man had called her by name. Kenneth joined them at the door and said to the man, Sir, perhaps these items are for someone else. The, this building does have 25 apartments. But the man repeated very firmly, Mrs. Ware, here are the things you asked for. And then he emptied the basket onto the table and left. Susie and Kenneth stared in surprise. The items that he placed on the table, they were exactly what Susie had listed in her prayer. In fact, the flower was even the specific brand that she had asked for. Susie hurried to the door to see where the man had gone, and Kenneth went to the window. The apartment building, it only had one exit, which went right past their window. So they thought for certain that they would see him leaving. But guys, the man never walked past the window. Susie opened the door and looked down the hallway. He wasn't there either. The stranger had disappeared. A sense of holy awe fell upon the wares. God had sent his personal messenger to answer Susie's prayer. Five more years passed before Kenneth and Susie returned to France. Through their ministry, guys, a whole lot of people came to know Jesus. The wares helped establish a strong work among the gypsies, and Kenneth pre uh, prepared a French translation of the Bible, uh, a concordance too, and, and a whole lot of other printed pieces to strengthen the church in France. But he and Susie, they never, ever in their entire lives forgot the kind stranger who met their needs in response to a simple prayer. Don't ever, don't ever think that God won't answer your prayers, because he hears you and he loves you, just like he heard the wares and he loved them. And with that, guys, I think we should pray. Will you pray with me? Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the missionaries and the work that you're doing in France. Lord, we pray for the kids and the young people there that they will not just learn about you, but that they will become totally in love with you, Lord, 
because you love them so much. We pray that you would help them to not just learn, but to find you in truth. We pray for our missionaries and the pastors and the French AG, Lord, that they would be able to continue doing your work. We pray for the churches there and the Christians who are reaching out to the refugees, Lord, that they would express your love because you love every single person. And Lord, we pray for the Christian women who are helping other women and young girls who have been hurt by other people so that they might know your love for them. Bless our missionaries. Bless the churches in France. Lord, draw the people of France close to you. In Jesus' name, hey, amen. Okay. Welcome to Go360, the show that takes you 360 degrees all the way around the world. I like camping. Sometimes it's fun to get away from home and see something new for a change. Fishing and swimming and s'mores around the fire are a whole lot of fun. But after a while, it sure is nice to get back home. But let me tell you about a group of people who camp out their whole entire life. They're called gypsies. A gypsy is a person who moves around from place to place. They don't have a permanent home. Gypsies like to keep things simple. Food, shelter, and clothing are basically all it takes to make them happy. They don't keep track of time. Instead, they choose to take each day as it comes along. Hey, check out the pets that some of the gypsy kids get to take on the road with them. It would be kind of fun to have a pet rooster. John McCossack is an Assemblies of God missionary. He has been working with the gypsies for a long time. My heart is to see as many gypsies that to be saved. and. Uh, not just to evangelize, be able to, to help those who are going in other parts of the world. Because gypsies move around so much, missionary John knows that sometimes Christian gypsies have a tough time finding other believers. That's why he's really excited about a special tent convention going on in the country of France. Here, 20,000 gypsy believers get together and worship God twice a year. The kids love it at the convention. It gives them a chance to meet some new people. The tent convention not only gives them a chance to do some fun stuff, but they get to take part in some special services. We need a new uh, generation to carry on God's work. So many of them have received also the desire to go and uh, do missionary work. You and I know that sometimes kids like you and me need encouragement. And the same is true for gypsy kids. You know, some people don't like gypsies and they say and do really mean things to show it. That's why this tent convention is great, especially for the kids. It gives them a chance to meet some really cool Christian gypsies and encourage each other. God says in his word that he loves every one of us. He sent his son on the cross for each one of us includes also the gypsies themselves. We all the same in the eyes of God. Guys, I was really excited to get to teach you this. Uh, this is gonna be our last Wednesday night video for a little while, um, but I wanna encourage you, we're still gonna be doing High Point on Sunday mornings at 11.15, and I look forward to seeing you here every single time because I love to spend some time with you. So until I see you on that Sunday morning, please spend some time this week praying for our missionaries. Pick any country in the world and pray for them. And remember, no matter what, you are loved so much more than you will ever know by God and by us. I'll see you next time. Bye.